You may have been to an amusement park and walked up to your favorite ride or roller coaster only to find it closed. You ask the ride operator standing in front of the sign why the ride is down, and they give you the classic, we're down for a mechanical issue and we don't know how long it'll be. How mean! Obviously that operator knows everything and is just trying to be mean to you! You should go sue the park for having rides that break down and therefore are clearly dangerous! But wait, let's look at this situation from the other perspective, the more logic-sided perspective. Mechanical downtimes are often evidence that a ride is completely safe. These huge pieces of machinery are designed with the idea of safety first, meaning there are thousands of small things such as hundreds of sensors that detect where a train is, pressure switches that monitor air pressure, solenoids that control the brakes, contactors and drives that control each motor. These are just some of the parts that make rides safe. And much like everyday items such as light bulbs, car parts, and appliances, these things wear out. The roller coaster and ride parts I just named are used hundreds to thousands of times a day. Eventually, one of them on one part of the ride will wear out. And if any one of them does, the ride will go down. All of that is just covering the control system for the ride. Mechanical problems with the ride itself are more rare, but happen too. And if one of these occurs, even if it's something minor, the ride will also go down. Now back to the poor ride operator we mentioned earlier. Ride operators are not ride maintenance. Most of the time when a ride goes down, a ride operator immediately gets sent down to entrance. This is well before anyone from the maintenance team arrives to diagnose the problem. It may seem unbelievable that a ride op who has been there all summer does not know what's wrong, but trust me, they don't. This also goes for the question of how long they will be down. Maintenance most likely does not know exactly how long the downtime will last. Neither does the poor ride operator at entrance. Now, almost any video talking about ride safety will be quick to mention the statistics. And if you don't already know, your chances of being seriously injured or killed on a ride is extremely low. But I'd like to do a little more than just say that. Let's get into just how low they really are. The National Electronic Injury Surveillance System, or NEISS, is used to monitor injuries caused by products across the United States by gathering information from emergency rooms around the country. We will be using their data, however, the NEISS data certainly overestimates the number of injuries caused by rides. This is because NEISS data reports only the general area where an accident occurred. So someone being injured as a result of a ride is lumped in with people who trip on the midway or choke on a french fry. It also does not separate injuries that are caused by guest conduct. Keeping this in mind, in 2015, the NEISS reported approximately 30,000 accidents associated with amusement parks. IAPA reported that around 375 million guests visited American parks that year, and that number does not include attendance at portable amusement sites even though the NEISS data does. Taking all this data at face value and assuming there were no injuries on portable amusement rides that year, it would mean that a guest had a 0.008% chance of being injured at an amusement park seriously enough to need to visit an emergency room. Of these patients, over 98% of them were treated immediately or were not treated at all and left the emergency room. The Consumer Product Safety Commission estimates that in 2015, 381 people nationwide had injuries related to amusement park rides that required hospitalization. There were zero deaths. Compare that to the over a thousand people that were hospitalized for injuries related to unpowered garden equipment that year, and you will realize just how insanely safe rides are. I'm able to make my What Really Happened series of videos due to the infrequency of these accidents. When an accident occurs, the media will jump on it and make a huge deal out of it. But when someone dies in a car accident, it's rarely reported on. I will end this video with a personal anecdote. Since 2016, when I first really started to get interested in rides, I've had five of my friends or close family members get in car accidents. Two of them tragically died. In that same time span, including a whole season working at Cedar Point, I've not known or seen a single person die on a ride or be seriously injured by a ride. Riding an amusement ride is one of the safest activities you can enjoy. 
While it would be nice to have no injuries or fatalities, unfortunately, due to the nature of humans, this is impossible. I hope that you now have some perspective on the safety of amusement rides. As always, ride on riders, ride on.